today we want to continue. We read from verse 25 to 32 to finish that parable because that parable has a flip to it. Amen? Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. You remember? The prodigal called son returned. He had a big brother, isn't it? Yes. So, uh-huh. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he had music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come home, he replied. Mm -hmm. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. Mm -hmm. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look. All these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened. Amen. Let's continue. The prodigal son's parable pictures our Lord's judgment of the publican and the sinners. That is the younger brother. Are you listening to me? That is a judgment of the publican and the sinners. Are you listening? And that is what it pictures. But Jesus continued the story and introduced the elder brother who is a clear illustration of the scribe and the Pharisees. So the Younger brother represented the publicans and the sinners. But the older brother represented who? The scribe and the Pharisees. Scribe and Pharisees were two largely distinct groups. Scribe had knowledge of the law and could draft legal documents. Contrast for marriage, sorry, con 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 contracts for marriage, divorce, loans, inheritance, mortgages, the sale of land and the like. That's what they would do. But the Pharisees, primarily they were scholars and educators. They were politically inactive, except the written law of Moses, known as what? The Torah, the written Tanakh, uh, Tanakh and, and all other books in the Old Testament. Simple as that. So these two different groups, that's how they were. The Pharisees believed in the angels. The scribe did not believe in existence of angels. They were more political. You understand? Yes, that's the understanding. But let's continue. You'll understand. I have an observation. The publican and sinners were guilty of the obvious sins of the flesh. That is who the prodigal son was. Sin of the flesh. The mortal body. Are you listening to me? Of course. These are people who sin. still struggle with issues of life. Work on a machida. Are you understanding? You know, they still struggle with sin and things like those. Those are the publican and the sinners. But the Pharisees and the scribes were guilty of the sins of the spirit. The sin of the spirit. Do you know the sin of the spirit? Iniquities. The sin of the spirit is those sins that you commit that people are not able to see. But they live inside you. Muchawi. I can even claim they are born again. But their attitude and what they do, you wonder if they are Christians. That's a Pharisee and a scribe. It's not the end of the world. That's what 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, but let's continue. Their outward action may have been blameless. But their inward attitude were abominable. Open Matthew chapter 23, verse 25 to 28. This is who they were. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Mm -hmm. you, you, you clean the outside Are of the cup. Are you saying they're hypocrites? That's what we call iniquities. Hypocrites. Uh -huh. You clean the outside of the cup and dish. But inside, they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Are you listening to me? You look holy in the outside, but inside you. Ha! Uchawi. 
Mm -hmm. Continue. Blind Pharisee. Blind Pharisee. First clean the inside of the cup and yeah. dish, and then outside, the outside will be clean. Mm -hmm. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you yeah. hypocrites. Hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, uh -huh. but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and every unclean. Amen. In the same way, the outside you appear to people as righteous, as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Hypocrite and wickedness. So, you can clearly see that this is who they were. Jesus said you're like whitewashed tombs. I think Jesus was looking at Mount Olive. You know, Mount Olive, when you stand in Israel, look at Mount Olive. All the tombs at Mount Olive, they are whitewashed. In Mepaka, whitewashed. Are you listening to me? What you see inside that tomb, you cannot believe. This is what the Pharisees were. Hypocrite and full of wickedness. We must admit now, let's let go straight to an end. Please follow me here. We must admit that the elder brother had some virtues that are commendable. True or false? Commendable. When you, when you read some of the things, we co they are really commendable. He worked hard and always obeyed his father. True or false? Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Green leaves. He worked hard, so hard, and always obeyed his father. He never brought disgrace either to the home or to the village. Compared to his younger brother, he was the saint, true or false. When you're looking for a true picture of a saint, the older brother portrayed it. However, important as obedience and the diligence are all those things that we've said. They are not the only test of what? Of character. That's why the text of text, okay, test of character starts from the inside to the outside. Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. How do I know you're a good Christian? I just have to look at your fruit. The way you walk, what you do on a daily basis, the way you relate with Jesus. That's what Jesus said. He said, I am the true vine. Any vine that is not connected to me shall be cut and thrown into the fire. Jesus was asked, are we going to know that one is born again? He didn't say you will know them by their eloquence or by their confession. He said you shall know them by their fruit. Fruit shows you are born again or you are not. Fruit you shall know. This is why it's important that we learn this lesson. Jesus taught that the two greatest commandments are to do what? To love God and to love others. You cannot love God, you don't serve others, and claim that you love God. No, it does not happen. To love God is to serve his people. Are you listening to me? That's, you know, these things are that simple. The two greatest commandments are to love God and to love others. But the elder brother broke both of this divine what? Commandment. Look at what he did. He did not love God. Represented in the story by who? By the father. That's what the parable means. And two, he did not love his brother. His brother was lost. And the brother came back. But he acted like he is the superior one. He is the one who is righteous. True or false? The elder brother will not forgive his brother. Who wasted the family inheritance. And disgraced the family name. But neither will he forgive his father who had graciously forgiven the young man. You know, the young man does very what? Sins. So which means he's hungry at the father, is also annoyed with the boy. How many of us in Christianity today, we live like that? You look at someone and you say, ah, God, I have been here for, 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 for all of my life. And he's the one who's married. <coughs> He just came two months ago. <laughs> As some fact, when you examine the sins of the elder brother, you can easily understand why he pictures the scribe and the Pharisees because they were hypocrites. Number one, he was self-righteous. 
He openly announced the sins of his brother. But he could not see his own what? Sin. That's how many people are, including in marriage. It is always the other person. Every good every person does, you forget about it. The little poison that is there, that is what you see couple concentrating on. Yesterday you bought a flower. The following day, all you did, all you did, you didn't say, hi, it's a problem. That's why we tell people, always remove the poison because the poison is very strong. I can do 99% of good. All I need is to put a little poison. You drink that drink, you're dead. <laughs> he was self-righteous. He openly announced the sins of his brother, but he could not see his own sins. I, I want us to read. Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to 14. To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down of, on everybody else, Jesus told the parable. Mm -hmm. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Mm -hmm. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I, thank I am you. not like the other men. I'm not like the other man. Robbers, evildoers, mm -hmm. adulterers, mm -hmm. or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I fast twice a week. And give a tenth of all I get. Mm -hmm. But the tax collector stood at a distance. Uh -huh. He would not even look up to heaven, uh -huh. but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me. Have sinner. mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I tell you that this man, faith, sorry, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home joy filled before God. But everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Will be exalted. Amen? That's why in the Bible study I ask him, how many liars are here? People are like, uh, <laughs> how many of you have lied this week? People are like, I haven't lied. I haven't done this. Be very careful. Anyone who stands before the Lord and says he has not seen these are liars. Even when we don't say it, just entering in Mataka, just hearing what we hear. Even hearing a lie by someone else who has said it and you are not part of it, you are a liar. You don't know that? Oh, you have no idea. That's why the Bible says, anyone who says, how many times we go before the Lord and we have not done anything wrong, but you just stand, you start by repenting. Because no mere mortal man, until the day we are glorified. That's, why the re that's the reason why we must be glorified. Take the uncorruptible bodies for us to meet Jesus Christ. Because no mere mortal man can meet Jesus in this mortal body. And then they walk together. Jesus in his glory, you cannot. It, it cannot happen. Self-righteous is bad. Is evil. That's why many people are not changing from the inside to the outside. Because the day you start fast fearing God, understanding the God we serve, your life will start changing from that understanding. That's what it means. Are we together? The Pharisees defined sin primarily, primarily in terms of outward action, not inward attitude. They completely miss the message of the sermon on the mount. It emphasizes in what? In what attitude? Let me show you. Are you a born again Christian? If you want to understand whatever Jesus taught, always start with Matthew chapter 5. Go. Open your Bible. Let me show you something. This is why when I look at the liberal, I tell them, shame on you. You have no idea. That is not what Jesus taught. Go in Matthew chapter 5. Let me show you something. This is when, whenever I teach about the ideals of Christianity. Amen? 
Look at this. It starts with the Beatitudes. With the Beatitudes, just look at the thing Jesus taught. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Are you listening to me? A poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Who is a poor in the spirit? A poor in the spirit is someone who portrays the same character of a poor in the physical. A poor in the physical is the one who keeps asking. So anyone who is poor in the spirit is the same person also who keeps asking spiritual things. The more you are poor in the spirit, the more you keep asking, that's how rich you are. And he said, the kingdom of God is of such people. Are you seeing? Look at how Jesus continued. He said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be. He's not saying blessed are those who cry every day. The word mourn here, blessed are those who make intercession. Through intercession of the heart. Which means they meet, they can connect with God. It is from inside to outside. That's the word mourning there. He continued, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit what? The earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Are you seeing that? For they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown what? Mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. It's like the more, if you are not pure in your heart, you will never see God. What matters more? That's why Christianity always exposes your imperfection because Christianity is always about the heart. True Christianity is the heart. When the heart of a human being is not touched, that's why the Lord himself, he said, the heart of man is desperately wicked beyond repair. Who can understand it? I myself as a pastor, I meet people that pierce me every day. What shall we? But if you just remember the word of Jesus, you are like, yes, mortal me, a mortal man cannot please God. Until God started touching that heart and changing it, turning it, and bringing that me, a mortal man closer to him. Are you listening to me? But let's just move. Look at, look at what, what I'm saying here. In bracket, they completely miss the message of the sermon on the mount. And it emphasizes on what? Inward attitude and holiness of the heart. When you continue, you will see Jesus. The, the, what is the subtitle? It says what? Salt and light. Are you seeing that? You must be the salt. You must be the light. The salt helps to make food. To give it flavor, which we call sava. When you lose your flavor, who can make you, who can make you flavorful? Nothing. That is sonship. Sonship is in the salt. Sonship is in the light. Brethren, listen to me. Christians, wherever you are living, child of God, do you remember what we are talking about? Character. When you are seated in your office, when you are seated where? Wherever you go, whatever you do, or you do your business, ukiwana mutu amekuja kwako, Priscilla, someone comes to you and tells you, yeah, Jeff Priscilla. See, I have some 30,000 here, man. So, so she can do that. Kuna kitu na taku nifani here. Cecilia Lia. Lia maisha ako mzima. End of retreat. Ujulizi kwa hani umtu amekuja na hii 30,000 kwangu. Ni nini ye wana kwangu kila siku. Character is predictable. Are you listening to me? People will know that this person, I can't corrupt it. Ni pande ni shuke. You are the light, you are the soul. Are you seeing that? And this is what he say. When you continue, look at Jesus talks about murder. He talks about adultery. All these are issues of the inside of the heart. He talks about divorce. He talks about oath. He talks about a knife for a knife. He talks because you are taught. Niki, niki kutoa macho unanitoa macho. That's how they were taught. But Jesus has come to tell them. He came to tell them. Ukitolawa hii macho. Peana hii You play with Christianity? Christianity is the holiness of the heart. It's the inward attitude. When God touches your heart, it changes you from the inside 
you become a better person. Amen? Look at how he continues. He teaches about what? Love for your enemies. Giving to the needy. He continues. He talks about prayer. He talks about what? Fasting. He talks about what? Treasures in heaven. He said, oh my God, some people are immature. One to you that are just laying treasures here on earth. I took a young man outside and I showed him. Do you see all this building here? Do you know they belong to someone? They belonged to someone. Most of the owners of those buildings died. They are no longer there. It is over for them. If they did not live in eternity, it is over. This is fantasy. Are you saying this? This is not real. That's why we say, God tells Abraham and his wife, Sarah, God had to wait until they were dead for him to do something. Because as long as they were not dead, they were living. If you are still living in this world, you live for this world. Let me tell you, reality is this. Get the treasures of the world, but use them for the Lord. If you don't use them for the Lord, waste of time. This is what Jesus was saying here. Listen to what he says. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth. Where moth and rust do what? Destroy. He continues. Listen to what the things he's teaching. He says, he speaks about do not worry. Are you seeing the context? He speaks about treasures in heaven. Then he comes about speaking the heart of man. He says, do not worry. Each day has enough trouble. Tomorrow belongs to whom? To the Lord. Because you live here on the earth. You worry about tomorrow. He goes by seeing, saying what? Judging others. And he continues by talking about judging others. This is almost the same attitude of the big brother here. And he continues saying, ask, seek, knock, it shall be given. Then he finishes by talking about the narrow and the wide gate. The wide gate that is destructive. The narrow path. Only few find it. He, continue, he talks about the tree and its fruits. The tree must give the fruit. He continues. He talks about the wise and the foolish builders. Some people are building on the sand. They are building where? When the storm comes, what will happen? Those are the teachings of Jesus. When you read them, if you feel your heart happy, then you know you're born again. But if you feel kisu, you have to be able to be able Amen? Number two, the, 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 the elder brother or the older brother was another, uh, sorry, pride was another of his feelings. He was very proud. He had served his father all those years. He had never disobeyed his will. What a testimony to say. Throw out. But his heart was not in his work. Do you know you can serve, but your heart is not in the work. Like who? Like Jonah, the elder brother, did God's will, but not from the heart. Are you listening to me? Listen to me, listen to me. Jonah was sent by God. God is telling him, Go to Nineveh. There are some people that are living in sin there. I want them to get born again. I want them to change. I want them to repent. But because Jonah hated them, his heart was full of what? Tribalism. His heart was full of what? Hatred. Jonah said, no. Lord, ah, you cannot save those people. None. Nineveh. No, I'm not going. The Lord does this. Look at what the Lord did. The Lord basically at night, Jonah was, was, was I, I think, resting at night and he didn't have anything to cover him, like a shade. I think the Lord bought something like a vine, which grew instantly and it gave him what? A shelter. And the Lord made sure, within no time, it withered. 
Then Jonah came out. He started complaining. Ah, that vine was giving me a shelter. At least it was giving me something, keeping me away from. The Lord looked at Jonah and said, you see? Yani Jonah, a vine that I've taken away from you. You look at how you're complaining and say, why have you made it weaker? But I've sent you to a human being who is dying. You can't go. You see how we look holy in outside, but inside our heart. We are so wicked that we have no time to go and preach to another soul. Brethren, listen to me. The only way you show that you love God is you show it through people. You serve them. Are you listening to me? You become their servant. That's true service. At your own time, you can read in Jonah chapter 4. You will see that story. God looked at Jonah and said, Jonah, you are wicked. Yani, you can complain because of a vine that has withered. But I have sent you to an entire city to preach to them and tell them to repent. You are refusing. But look at how your heart. Yani, you can care for a vine, but you can't care for a human being. That's how many of us are. He was a hard worker and a faithful worker. Qualities to be commanded. But his work was not a labor of love that will please who? His father. Are you the one? May God forgive you. You cannot help but notice his unconcern for his missing brother. Imagine having to be told that his brother had come home. The father watched for the young son day after day. Finally, saw him afar. When you read that story, even in the movie, the way it is put, it's like the father could not sleep. The father will always go to the window and check. The father will stand at the window. It's like, when is he coming? It's like he has hope. You know that this is hope that calls you wherever you are. Are you listening to me? This is like hope that calls you wherever you are. You're like, is he coming? When is he going to come? Is he coming? Have you seen anyone like him? Is he going to come? But you know what? He came. He came back. The father is waiting. The father is not waiting. Like he's just waiting for him to get back in the house. Because he knows. Do you remember what we said about church? The father knew as long as he was out of church, he was out, out of, he was what? In danger. He was out of service. And he was out of protection. Imagine having to be told that his brother had come home. The father watched for the young son day after day and finally saw him after, a far off. But the elder brother did not know his brother was home until one of the servants told him. That's how unconcerned he was. Even though he knew it, it would make his father happy. The elder brother did not want his younger brother to come home. Are you listening to me? That's how it was. Why should he share his estate with somebody who had what? Wasted his own inheritance. Why should he even share the father's love with somebody who had brought shame to the family and the village? Do you remember the parable? We will go through it. The one that Jesus used about these people that came on time and started working. And there was one that came late. We'll go through it. He came late and he started working too. When they finished, this one had a few hours. The other one had worked. The other one had worked for many, many, many hours. But when they finished, Jesus paid all of them the same. The other one started complaining. We've been here. We've been working many hours. Jesus said, that's not your problem. I pay equally. Be very careful. One time I told someone, Anton LaVey got born again. I looked the face of that person. It's like, no wonder we are not God. If we were God, no one would go to heaven. Do you know Anton LaVey? The founder of the Church of Satan. The headquarter is still in California. 1996, 1966. Listen to me, San Diego. 
until today. But the man went on the bed and told Lafay, founder of the church of Satan. While he was in coma, like he, they just saw someone. Who, <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. This thing is real. It's real. I have seen heaven. I have seen heaven. The nurse led him to Christ. <laughs> and he died. You you will find yourself in the hell and turn the veil in heaven. <laughs> The first shall be last. And the last shall be... You see prostitution. Prostitute. They are dying every day like in Jugu. They are going straight in heaven. Last, like one escaping from fire. Because the gospel you preach to them. Nimushale. It's like a spear. That's why we say. That's why I tell people, never get discouraged when you preach to someone. Mushale umemudunga. Iko na sumu. Kuna wanyama... Ndani ya pori, unachilia mshale. Chuku! Chua! Lakini kana kimbia badu. Na kana potea. Lakini kata kufia mali. Kuna mali kata kufia. Tuingine tunakufia kwa hospitali. Nasiketa, I want Jesus. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I accept as my personal savior. Please save me today in Jesus name. Hey, doctor, doctor, straight to heaven. Straight to heaven. We uko hapa kuna yesu na unacheza na ye. Utaona janamu na macho yako hivi. <laughs> hey, hey. Chauri yako. This is the elder brother. What should he share his estate with somebody who had wasted his own inheritance? What should he even share the mother's love with somebody who had brought shame to the family and the village? Reports of the prodigal's lifestyle only made the elder brother look good. Are you listening to me? And perhaps this will make the father love his obedient son even more. No doubt about it. The arrival of the younger son was a threat to the older son. That's how many of us we are. Perhaps the most disturbing thing about the elder son was his ferocious what? Annoyance. Extreme. He was angry at both his father and his brother. And he would not go into the house and share into the joyful of celebration. I know a lady whose father abandoned her. Are you listening to me? I know a lady whose father abandoned her. When I met her, we started praying. I told her, you have to forgive your dad. In 2020, she struggled with it. The father got born again. And the father walked in the church. All these years we've known this girl as born again. You should have seen her that day. She walked out of church. She was mad at God. <laughs> mad at the father. God, how can you save such a person? That's how many of us are here. How can you save such a person? How? How can you save such an evil man? Lord, do you know what that man did to me? It's like you, you are good. That's how many of us are. How could God, how, how, how can God save him seven? How can God save who? Idi Amin. <laughs> How could God save Hitler? You know, all those things, that's how we think. It's like, no, there are some people who have no right to be born again. Everything, you are a child of the promise. Everything you are, the father has, is yours. That one was lost. When he walks back, you should be happy. You should go. Give him your chest. You should embrace him. You should say, you are lost, brother. We could not sleep. But you are like, eh. he took everything. He went and scorned that. I've been here with you. Look at how you're treating. You've never given me a party. But because he is immature, he doesn't understand that everything the father has belongs to him. 
Oh, you've never given me a party. You've never done this. That's a lie. This is the understanding. When we look at anger, it is what? A normal emotion. And it need not to be what? Sinful. The Bible says, be you angry and sin not. It means you can get, there's a chemical in our body. You can get extremely annoyed, but don't sin. Are you listening to me? Me, there are people that I've walked with them. Some people have pierced me. And I did not put it like a joke. Did you find it? I told even my pastor, I am annoyed at these people. And I don't want to see them near me. But I'm not bitter with them. Because I pray for them every day. And I'm waiting for them to come back. Are you listening to me? I'm just disappointed. Disappointed. Because some people are ingrate. Brethren, let me tell you. You walk with people. But at the end of it, they drop you like what? Hey, master. At a flower in a drop you a vizuri. The Bible says we are living in the last days. Are you listening to me? The last days. Second Timothy chapter 3. People will become what? Lovers of themselves. Ungrateful. There are some people that are just ungrateful in life. They forget very quickly. Ingrate people. Such people. All you do, you just let them be. You continue praying for them. Even Jesus. That's why we will see the Bible. Moses got what? Anoint. David got anoint. The prophet were anoint. Our Lord Jesus displayed only anger at sin. And so should we today. So that you don't mistake, mistaken what we are saying. Are you listening to me? The elder brother, what he would have done. He goes, he receives his younger brother. Come here in the house. Are you listening to me? He hugs him. They celebrate too. They do everything. Then time will come. You sit him down. He say, young brother, what you did was immaturity. You need to correct things. Are you listening to me? Yeah. To, to, to embrace someone back does not mean to put his stupidity aside. No. You will correct him at the due time. But you must accept people back. You must learn to forgive people. Are we together? That's what it means. The elder brother was angry with his brother, with his father, because his father had given the young son the feast that the elder brother had always wanted. Look at what he said. You never gave me so much as a goat. He said to his father, but you killed for him the valuable what fatted what? Calf. But he was lost. This is why we tell people, I, the day I was given a calf, I never read anywhere. I never heard anywhere that heaven rejoiced. <laughs> because all this thing in this world, there is none, there is nothing that makes heaven rejoice. But the Bible tells me, when one soul, one soul returns, where? To the Lord like a prodigal son. The Bible says there is a party in heaven. Come and use you, please. Come. Come, Mr. May. Please come and stand here at the pulpit. I still need another one. Come, Brother Israel. So, please, you stand here. You stand here. You stand there, please. Look at this. Brethren, many of you do not understand. Sometimes I've seen even people going, murmuring and going through sins. I want you to learn this lesson today. This is the philosophy behind my ministry. Pastor Papi's ministry. This is the philosophy. In Mark chapter 5, the Bible says, Jesus came ashore. And he met this man who was bound by demonic powers. Are you listening to me? Bound with demonic powers. And this man was so violent that no one could pass that way. Listen. Jesus asked, who are you? 
The demons in this man react and say, My name is Legion. Because we are many. My name is who? Because we are many. I think Jesus went around. Akifikiria. Okay. Because Jesus will teach by illustration. Look at what he says. Every demon, all the demons, a legion was the Roman army from five to six thousand up to seven thousand strong men. I'm talking about Mark chapter five. Are you listening to me? He cast out those demons. The Bible says, just next from that man where he was, there were some, some shepherds who had around 2,000 pigs. Brethren, listen to me. 2,000? You know 2,000 pigs? Even in the modern world today, for you to find people who have 2,000 pigs is not a joke. Are you listening? That's how all come. I don't know. What, what will I call it? 2,000 pigs. In those days, towns were very small. So when you're talking about 2,000 pigs, that is an entire economy like of Kenya. Jesus did this. Cast out the demons. Send them into pigs. And all the pigs ran into the ocean. Pigs don't run in the ocean. That tells you those were demons that came from water. 2,000 pigs ran where? Into the ocean. This is the philosophy behind my ministry. There is no amount of money or property or anything that you can compare with one soul. Are you listening to me? This is why I am ready. I can pay even one million to win one soul. That is the philosophy. But it will take the spirit of God for you to understand that. Because Jesus didn't bother. If you do that in times that you are living, Jesus would have been in where? Behind bars. He cast out demons. They entered into pigs and they disappeared. Now, these are the shepherds. So I am Jesus. Send me away. Send me away from your town. So you are like you are arresting me. Say, get out, get out of my town, get out. So I am gone. The Bible says the only man that was freed wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus told him, Now you are free. Get back to your people and preach. That man evangelized the entire region with his testimony. Can we grow up and become Christians? Thank you. Please, maybe see that. That's how we are poor. We think we are. That's why we are poor. Extremely poor. One soul, the Bible says, when a soul gets born again, heaven rejoices. There is a party in heaven. You cannot say you are a Christian, you are not preaching to others, you are not evangelizing. Where do you put your money? 2,000 pigs. Gone. Jesus didn't bother what that town they will eat that day, where money will come. He said, the rest shall be added. Brethren, a soul of a human being. Now, this is why the attitude of this brother was wicked. Your brothers come back home. You can't see it. All you are seeing is you hate your dad. You hate your brother. I have been here. I have been this. This is why. The body of Christ is not standing strong. The elder brother's dream were all shattered because the father had forgiven who? The prodigal son. What a heart. Salvation is in the heart. 
when your heart is not won by Jesus, you're not born again. As far as the elder brother was concerned, the younger brother deserved none of it. Had he been faithful? No. Had he obeyed the father? No. Then why should he be treated with such kindness and love? The Pharisees had a religion of good works. But they are by, by their what? Fasting, studying, praying, giving. It is good to fast. It is good to pray. It is good to study the word. It is good to give. But you have to check the character in your heart. Are you listening to me? They hoped to earn blessings from God and merit what? Eternal life. They knew little or nothing about the grace of God. Tell your neighbor grace. That's why we always say, It's all about grace. Everything we do is all grace. Everything. What do you have if it is not grace? Everything we have is grace. A good woman is grace. A good car is grace. A good house is grace. Good ministry, grace. Good eloquence, grace. You are handsome, grace. You are beautiful, grace. Everything, grace. Everything. Tell me what you have if it is not grace. Everything about us is grace. They knew little or nothing about the grace of God. However, it was not what they did. But they did not do that estranged them from God. Are you listening to me? Always check. Not what you're doing. What is it that I'm not doing? When they saw Jesus receiving and forgiving irreligious people, they rebelled against it. Even more, they failed to see that they themselves also needed who? The Savior. We all of us need the Savior. The same father who ran to meet the prodigal came out of the house of feasting to plead with the older son. How gracious our father is and how patient he is with our weaknesses. How many times God has come for us and yet we throw him away. I walk with Christian every day, I say. Look at how we treat Jesus every day. But he's still coming. He's saying, I am here. Masses is there. Can you run back to the altar? Can you still call him? He's hearing you. Can you say, Father, I am here. I am running back. The worst, the older son refused. Wow. The father explained that he would have been willing to us a feast for the older boy and his friend. But the boy had never asked him. Furthermore, ever since the division of the estate, the elder brother owned everything. He could use it as he pleased. The elder brother refused to go in. He stayed outside and grimaced. You know grimaced? Kiburis. <clears throat> There's some people like that. Ushaona. You can't tell anyone something good. Even no matter how good it is. Can you come? Hey. Hey. That's how the elder brother was. When God says come. Don't do that. Run. Are you listening to me? Run back to the altar. He missed the joy of forgiving his blood. There is joy in forgiving. When people don't have joy, they become ugly. Because even your heart, I pumu with Zuri. Yes, that's what happened. Yeah. That's what happened. But when you forgive, there's a joy that comes upon you. You even breathe very well. It's very therapeutic to your body. The joy of pleasing his father. Are you seeing? He missed the joy of forgiving his brother and restoring the broken fellowship. The joy of pleasing his father and uniting the family again. He missed it. How strange that the elder brother could speak peaceably to a servant boy, but he could not speak peaceably to his brother or father. Strange. 
If we are out of fellowship with God, we cannot be in fellowship with our brothers and our sisters and equally. If we abba an unforgiving attitude toward others, we cannot be in communion with God. Are you listening to me? When they, they, when they show true repentance, we must, I use the word we must, it's a command. We must forgive those who sin and we should seek to restore them in grace and humility. Are you listening to me? This is true what? Everybody open up your mouth and say, this is true Christianity. Are you listening to me? Everybody in this parable experienced joy except who? You see how tricky it was? The younger son experienced the joy of returning of being received by a loving and gracious father. The father experienced the joy of receiving his son back safe and who? And how? Sound. But the elder brother would not forgive his brother. So he had no joy. He could not, he could have repented and attended the feast, but he refused. So he stayed outside and did what? Suffered. In my years of preaching, stroke teaching, and pastoral ministry, I have met brothers, struck sisters like this, who have preferred nursing their anger to enjoying the, fe the, 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 the fellowship of, of God and God's people because they will not forgive. Someone decided, say, I rather suffer what I'm feeling. I stay than forgiving. A heart that does not forgive cannot have joy. Are you listening? And many of us are living like the elder brother. It's all about the attitude of the inside. Amen? To learn to do what? To forgive. Amen? They have isolated themselves from the church. Even from their family. They are sure that everyone else is wrong. They alone are what? Right. They can talk loudly about the sins of others. But they are blind to their own sins. Don't stand outside. Come in and enjoy the feast.